a lot of talk lately about what is the mojo. Some simply come out and say, well, it's nothing more than a Talon. And I tell you that this is nothing more than a Volkswagen. So let's talk about why we did this with the Mojo. Some people would say, oh, it's just a Talon, so it's less expensive and he's going to make more money. It really wasn't that at all. What it was for us was an opportunity to rectify a crappy situation we were in with uh, the Japanese importer of Rich Pen. Um, you know, we put a lot of time into that brush. We never had one single conversation with the factory about the things that we were concerned about, things we wanted to change, things we thought would make a better product. But obviously, Fuso Seiki has a relationship with uh, some other well-known airbrush companies that prevented us from doing so. When that opportunity finally arised, we said to ourselves, you know, even during the time when we were doing this, there was a couple other occasions when we really wanted to do this with an American-made company. Well, at this point in time, when we are no longer able to get the brushes from Japan, we decided to make some calls to American manufacturers. We called uh, several, three maybe, I think, three it was. And um, we were able to get the best response and reaction from Pache. They were immediately interested. They were very involved with the process, easy to contact, always return my emails, always return my phone calls. And I have to tell you, when you're doing something like this, communication is the biggest thing. As you guys know, for us as customer service, being able to get a hold of us, it, it's very important. We are very appreciative of that. And, and uh, so when we were given that uh, from Pache, we decided that this was the company to work with. We, at that point in time, uh, got a hold of their Talon, which was their flag brush, basically their flagship airbrush of the, of the company, and probably the best performing brush that I've had my hands on from an American-made company at the time. And uh, we looked at the brush, we went through the stock brush, and we made some direct comparisons between the previous mojos. And uh, we started looking at the issues that, you know, through the years of working with the previous mojo, what people didn't like, what would they have changed. We got a lot of input. We listened to it all. One of the biggest things was finger placement and the bowl relationship right here. So what happens here with the pad, this is the stock Pache model, but show you the mojo, the difference between the previous mojo and this one, which was a big, big thing for us. The relationship of the size. And there's a couple other things that really change with this. Now you see this here, this really tight. Your fingers hitting the bowl all the time. Here, not so. One of the things that was nice about the Pache design was the distance between the relationship where the cup enters body and the orifice on which the paint exits through the fluid tip. You'll see that it's almost immediately right at the, the joint where the fluid tip screws into the body. That's nice for cleaning. Big help. With the previous mojos, there was the little narrow area. If I can find my brush or my wrench for this guy, here it is. Little narrow area right here very difficult to clean. It gets it's very, it's quite small. Uh, distance between here and there is, is a lot of crap that gets built up in your airbrush over a period of time if you don't clean them as regularly as regularly as you should, like myself. Um, I typically leave my paint and my brush overnight with the uh, urethanes. Water-based, different story. I clean them out every day. So, with that in mind, we'll talk about the fluid tips. You are recording this, right? Okay. The fluid tip is a very small design here. And it, you know what? It functions great, but the ergonomics of it uh, and the design is, is flawed in some ways. Uh, from a user standpoint, anytime your brush hits the ground on the standard Japanese rich pen Iwata type of configuration here, it's a very little area to be absorbed for the impact. And what happens in some of my own brushes and previously, this center section here would get shifted off center just from a slight blow. And you sit there with 
fine tweezers and needle nose pliers trying to wiggle it back concentric shape. So what I really enjoyed about the Pache design was the fact that they got the same geometry here on the ends but they got rid of that weak center spot on the brush uh, which many people snap this part of the tip off into their bodies and then if they can't recover it they're screwed and they have to buy another body. cha -ching! So this one here is uh, a little bit easier to work with. We like to wax all the threads here. You'll notice that there's a, a, a line serrated in there notifying that is the small size. This one here gets ported. Some of the facets here on this are also changed to deliver air uh, over this very smoothly until it exits the front of the air cap. Also inside a little bit of cleaning and reaming is also done to match the fluid tip to the needle. And if I could show you guys one of the other big differences between the uh, previous version of the Mojo and the new Mojo 3 is the fact that the relationship to the air cap is much bigger than what you may have taken off prior to on the Japanese version it's quite small, but in the end, what you're looking at is places where it's crucial in relationship to the fluid tip have about the same geometry. There's about the same clearance, same relationship. The actual pache chokes it down a little bit more so you can deliver it very low pressure with super atomized paint. But what they've done here, which I thought was very ingenious to step this down, is to actually chamber the inside relationship of the air cap to the outer dimensions and shapes of the fluid tip. So what that does is it breaks down the air, kind of chambers it so you always have a very fluid airflow in the tip. These are highly polished and resist and also kind of uh, smooths out the turbulence over a very small surface when you're dealing with air pressure, uh, you know, that are confined to very small areas around this particular fluid tip. Some might say that the Mojo 3 is nothing more than a Pache Talon. This is nothing more than a rifle. A little bit of quint there. Cool. Um, another thing that's important, and as I put this in, I'll show you guys. One of the things that we've noticed that, you know, we put the wax on this. You want to make sure that your fluid tip is snugly placed inside the body. And make sure it's good and snug. The beeswax helps it out a lot. Then you're going to go ahead and screw on your air cap. Now one of the things about the air cap that is different from the previous Mojo that this thing tightened down on the, on the other Mojo into the body and that was all you pretty much had. That was it. With this there's an O-ring and what that does is it allows you to change tolerances and the distances between your your air cap dimension and the distance between where it seats onto the body. Now one of the things that you'll notice if you're putting water in your brush, whatever you're going to thinner, cleaner, whatever, you'll notice that you can spray. If it doesn't give you a perfectly concentric spray pattern through your airbrush, you're going to want to uh, just maybe make a slight adjustment in this, rotate it back a quarter of a turn. And what that's going to do is open up that diameter, the orifice between the air cap and the fluid tip where it protrudes through it. Very small. We're talking microns here, very small. And this is going to find out one, what's, it's almost kind of like tuning it up a little bit. You're going to just rotate that till you get the best spray pattern. We're not talking a whole lot. We're talking just maybe just a little bit, quarter to a half a turn max. But you certainly don't want to sit there and crank, break out the pliers and reef this thing down. This O-ring is going to do quite the job because you're not going to be delivering a whole lot of uh, high pressure through this. So the O-ring is designed to hold up, say, you know, a certain amount of air pressure with, within workable tolerances of, you know, 70, 80 pounds if you're doing t-shirts, I don't know. But I'm typically working, you know, 28, maybe, somewhere near 26, maybe 30 at times. But it's choked down to deliver about 22, probably about that. You're going to get maybe two-thirds to three-fifths of the volume going into the airbrush coming out in the end. So this is a very crucial adjustment for those of you who have a brush and have gotten one of the first 30 that I uh, didn't test. Um, I didn't test every airbrush because I just got a little cocky. I was just like, yeah, this is great. This is going great. So now 
every brush is hand tested and we send along our little smiley card on our uh, three inch stickies so there's the cap <clears throat> and the needle so we'll go on to the um, the trigger assembly and what I've done is here is I've created a little jig that works off of a drum sander that's going to give you really smooth deliverance you don't need to have one of these huge things with big old edges you're not like going four by fouring in the mud with your airbrush handle you are simply trying to hold on to it and push it back and there's not enough air pressure or tension on this thing with springs that's going to prevent you from moving this without those big dynamic ridges that eat holes into the bottom of your fingers if you airbrush more than three hours a day so it was a big thing for me I really like the comfort app uh, and it works you know left or right handed so big change there one of the big things that people are going to notice between uh, the differences between the Japanese uh, Rich Pen uh, Mojo versions and the new Mojo here made in the US is the air valve. The air valve design uh, is a big improvement by Pache in regards to uh, range, ability to clean, and, and accessibility to get the parts off where you need it. Um, one of the problems and the disadvantages of this and the differences, and to me I've gotten used to it, is the fact that they don't have an O-ring um, where it seats the plunger down into the, the airbrush. Where in other words, your trigger is going to sit right on top of this. And this is the direct delivery into the piston that has an O-ring in here that allows it to seat. But along this piston, there is no O-ring. So if you're like starting to get a lot of blow-by into the body, it's probably a good sign you might want to turn the, the pressure down. Um, and that's kind of been the only thing for me that I've noticed significantly different between working with the two chassis and the, and the two different body designs. Um, but you do get a, a wide range of movement here in comparison to the limited throw that the, the other uh, design has. And one of the things I don't like about the other design in particular, I never did, it was a big pain in the ass. I always kept another one of these things around with my brush just to put it in. Is trying to get this stupid little washer or nut over top of the spring and the piston in order to, uh, you know, clean that out nicely. If you had a blowback or if your seal gave out, it's almost impossible without the correct tool. And obviously, they don't sell it on eBay. So one of the big differences. That's probably the biggest thing you guys will notice when you're working with a brush. Some people would say that the Mojo 3 is nothing more than a Pache Talon. This is probably nothing more than a guitar. The fluid to, oh yeah! All right, all right. So, talking about the fluid tip, or the nozzle as some people will refer to it, here is your Pache version that is existing inside the Mojo with some very slight modifications, rounding over, some polishing, some cleaning. It's like porting the head of a 350, you know, Chevy, a small block, and, you know, getting, you know, oomph, extra horsepower. Um, you know, getting the maximum horsepower for your displacement is what this airbrush is all about. And that's what we're doing. And trying to provide it to people at a cost that's reasonable not only to use purchase but to maintain and upkeep but to let one out of the bag for you guys here what we've got here on the right my right hand is an intermediate barrel piece that's going to allow you to screw in whatever Japanese fluid nozzle you want to put on your airbrush you could put 0 0.15, 0 0.18, 0 0.2 and from what I found from doing all the research for this brush is that with feeler gauges and, and diameter bore gauges that there's fluctuation in machining tolerances and anybody's going to tell you whatever the best one came in at so if they have a batch of 200 and there's a variance range of uh, 0.18 to a 0.22 do you think they're going to advertise that you know they average out a 0.20 no they're going to come out and tell you it's a 0.18 so what we're working on right now is actually a one-piece barrel size and a fluid tip that's going to run at a 0.12. You know what? And when I tell you that it's going to be a 0.12, I challenge you to go get a bore diameter of 0.12 
and measure it when we're done because it will be a point one two. I don't even want to tell you what the stuff that I measured was. It, it was ridiculous. Some of the other things and uh, and Ed as well. And uh, I might as well mention Ed in this video because he is the big man behind the machine. Uh, that would be Ed Collard. That is Nub's brother. And uh, he has been great working with designing these parts. He understands what's going on. So, back to the fluid tip. Got the stock fluid tip. And what you have here is the old modifying uh, intermediate barrel that will allow you to connect any of your Japanese tips and lose and use the um, American made needle with this very same tip. So we're working on that as well as providing a one piece unit but for those of you who, who really want to look at numbers and say well it isn't a good brush because it doesn't have the .18 Japanese tip in it you will soon be able to simply screw in at overpriced Japanese .18 tip and uh, there you go that's how we're going to cure everybody's problems it's simply by letting you have that little high price tip but this tip here as you can see looks pretty damn close to the same geometry it's going to have the same angles serves in a better function doesn't break off inside your body we're going to have this at a point one two point one two point one two <laughs> some would say this is nothing more than an egg stay away from this end all right so the needle guide this is one of our own designs without letting too many cats out of the bag we decided that a good bearing surface would be a softer surface like the, br the brass up against the chrome surface um, it's going to wear nicely and of course it's going to be a part that you know after several hundreds of thousands of hours of use you might wear it down and we'll replace it for you it isn't going to cost that much but the thing of it is it's all in the feel it's going to feel great we're also working on getting the uh, trigger assembly completely done without the chroming on it. it's going to give you a smoother feel as well that's coming up in the next mojo 3.1 something like that yeah so, so, yeah so we're constantly going to be getting everybody's input and we're going to let this brush evolve into what the needs of the community are we are not going to sit back and just say well this is the way the brush is this is what we're going to charge i like to kind of treat it like an ar-15 kind of like a modular gun platform where you're going to be able to grab this put on a different rail system you know a different bolt carrier group you know to get the different performance that you need you know sometimes you need a small caliber sometimes you need a big caliber so and one of the things I'm most proud of with this brush, and uh, I don't know how many of you guys ever dabbled into the world of making molds and prototypes, but let me tell you, three weeks of my life exist in manufacturing this one little piece. And I'll tell you why. Because I called a couple of uh, plastics mold injection places. They wanted $6,000 to start a run of these little pieces. I'm like, well, I'm never going to get this brush off the ground. I got to give you $6,000 to give me a couple plastic pieces. So please. I learned all about silicone molds and the different mediums and different plastics, different resins, different hardnesses, different uh, resistance to chemicals. I learned a whole bunch of stuff in this period of time. And uh, to anybody to simply say that this brush is simply a talon has no idea of the six to eight months of grinding, deliberation, preparation, trying this, trying that, changing this, changing that, they have no clue. So yeah, if that's what you believe, don't buy the airbrush because I probably don't want you as a customer. But if you believe that somebody puts a lot of hard work into something, puts their soul into something, and firmly believes in what they're doing, to give the brush a try, we'll back it with our own guarantee. This little guy, anyways, some people like to call him Elf Boots. I know, cute. But anyways, we designed this so that when you put it on your airbrush, you have the opportunity to have a couple different feels with the brush. I might as well start putting this thing together now I got all the parts. Alright. You can talk about the spring if you want. Oh well, you know, the spring is actually a it's it's actually a variable rate spring and it gives it a little bit more stiffer resistance at the very beginning of the pull when you're trying to get your, your detail of the brush. 
and then as you pull back it kind of softens up a little bit but the, the, the orientation of the spring is important as right here where you got your variable rate section your spring is going to go down towards your trigger and that's going to go down in there and then the back side here the whole assembly is going to get screwed in and the needle the thing that I like about this needle too before where was I going oh I started to talk about uh, the the handle okay so but while I'm assembling the airbrush here we got the needle um, the seal contact area here, we spent a lot of time in these areas. Everybody's like, oh, it's just a talon. Yeah, it's just a talon. It's not just a talon, man. We put a lot of things into this brush that are simply beyond what is coming straight from the Pache factory. As good of a job as they do and as much as we love working with these guys, there's things that they just don't have time to do that we spend the time doing. So the facets are worked over. And, and basically all this is is a delivery guide for your paint that's coming out directly from this orifice right here. To through the needle along the inside of the fluid tip and out through the edge exit here on the air cap. So the needle's going to go back down in there. It's highly polished. There's a couple different contact points that are very crucial. But once this thing's through here, we're going to be able to put a very small fluid tip around that needle and taper it down to a 0.12. Absolutely no problem with minimal of cost to you. So there we go. There's the brush. Got to put the uh, last little lock on here for the needle through the needle guide. And of course, we got cool features, you know, that we were working on. Um, if I can find my little crown tip, oh, there's one. So, you know, you can put your crown tip on top of this if you feel like you're know, working fabrics and stuff like that. You don't want to snag it because it'll, it'll chew your needle up real quick. You can screw it on there. Or you could put on this very dirty lid that I have here, my proprietary lid design. It's great for helping you grab the cup, take it on and off. We'll talk about the lid design. I'll show you guys some of the stuff that's going on inside here. This isn't just a pretty, fancy, shiny piece of aluminum that comes stuck on your brush. This is a well thought out design. And what I've done is actually change the inner dimension of this here so that your paint when it sloshes around your cup forces it away from your blowhole not so that it wants to you know simply leak out we also have a little set of screws up top of this little guy here where you can take your your crown cap wherever I put mine again why I think so small I lost it already see it wasn't attached and I've lost it already you attached it to the other lid Oh, there it is. That's why. <laughs> it's the glasses, man. It's the glasses. By the way, these are my new specs. I finally got bifocals. So anyways, if you don't feel like losing your crown cap, you can just go ahead and simply put it onto your cap. Pull it off with the anti-slosh contour. That's a lot of thought, people. I don't, I don't care what you say. I spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours laying in bed at night staying awake till my allergy medicine kicked in and knocked me out I designed this airbrush while well, I was in bed <laughs> no but there's a lot of thought into this you know what and it seems pretty damn obscure who the hell's worried about the cappy airbrush I mean why not why not think this product out why not take the time to do something other than cut a flat mortise across the bottom of the airbrush, stick it in a lid, and it's good. Let's sell that thing. Well, that's what, this isn't what we really wanted to do. We wanted to clean it up, make it something different. And it's 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 functional part of the airbrush. It just doesn't keep the paint in a cup. So, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, why change everything, right? So, there was no need to change the handle on this. There's no need to that. I didn't have to change it. It worked great. It was fine. It was a stock part. Didn't cost a whole lot. But let's get back to this air cap fluid tip assembly. In the very near future, you're going to have the opportunity to, one, put your favorite little Japanese micro tip into this airbrush and use it. Two, you can grab our own United States manufactured product which is going to sport a 0.12 real 
fluid tip diameter and work with your stock needle. But we are also having a new proprietary air cap made and it's going to be in the shape of a bullet. It's going to kind of look like a kind of a bullet. The whole, the whole assembly is going to kind of look like a shell casing and then this is going to become the bullet. And that's going to be highly polished brass. Um, nothing fancy. But these are all going to be upgrades. They're upgrades. These are all going to be upgrades. And this is just a trash can. So anyways, one of the last things that we're working on here for the new Mojo 3 is a proprietary air cap. And what I'm going to do is uh, working in conjunction with our new fluid tip that one, you can either use the American made version that's going to have a 0.12 or you can use the American made mid assembly that's going to allow you to run whatever Japanese little fluid tip you want. You want to spend the 30 bucks on the fluid tip and bust it off an airbrush? That's okay because now all you have to do is replace the intermediate barrel into your airbrush rather than replacing your whole body of your airbrush, which to me, yeah, you know, that sounds pretty cool because you don't have to pay for all that. So I know I've done it too many times in the past. So the new cap will be coming with the two different variable fluid tips. We'll let you spend as much money as you want with this one. You can go buy anybody's fluid tip for whatever version of whatever Japanese airbrush you want. It'll fit right in there. It'll work with the new cap. So I hope we've covered it. I think we've gone through a lot. This is very important. Let's recap. You didn't talk about the two different ways that you can use the grip. Oh, that's right. Okay, getting back to the grip. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. The grip assembly here, this little guy, little handler, everybody thinks that he's out bass fishing. Let's throw the airbrush in the water and it's going to attract bass. But no, it's actually designed hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of research. And did we talk about injection molding? I think we started to go off that tangent, didn't we? Okay, so we handled the $6,000 startup for injection molding, but. I spent a lot of time learning how to do silicone molds and different mediums that are going to work with this particular uh, part that we wanted to do. But the complexity was in the mold. I wasn't like, you know, sitting at playground making a fish mold in a plastic saucer with a plaster of Paris. This is done. This is all one piece mold right here. You tell me how I did it. One piece. So anyways, there goes some more of the time and the thought process that went into the mojo. We're talking a year of thought and about eight months of actually hands-on development. So now, for me, I'm kind of like a comfort guy. I like the knuckle drag. Everybody knows that. Kind of. But the one thing I did notice that I was missing from the previous mojo was the dimension of this area right in here. So what I did was I threw that together so I could get my knuckle dragging feel. And I also remember that some people like to airbrush with their fingers. And what was really nice is the placement of your middle finger, you know, the one that works like right here, and you can kind of just kind of hold on to the airbrush right there while you're doing your thing. And you just kind of pull the finger back, and it keeps a really good comfortable placement. You get a really good position for your thumb. Your middle finger is happy, as always and then your index finger works fine on top of the trigger. So there's the last little piece. These are the things. These are the thoughts. These are the hours and hours and hours and hours and weeks and months of preparation that went into releasing the Mojo 3. I hope you guys have gotten something from this. I hope that if you have any questions, you know that customer service is the bottom line with our products. You guys can always reach us. I get smoke signals sent to me at 2 o'clock in the morning from some guys. Uh, it's amazing the way in which people will contact us. I've also heard uh, Morse code off in the distance and I could recognize that it was a 30 out 6 being fired in sequence. It said, Mike, Mike, help me. Whatever it takes, you can email us anytime and get our support on our products. We're very proud to be an all-American company. We are very happy 
am proud to be working with Pache. They've been absolutely fantastic. We hope that you give our product a chance, not just based upon our reputation, but uh, based upon the price at which we are offering this product, which is two-thirds the cost of what it used to be. In today's world, most companies would simply uh, pocket the profit difference between manufacturing costs and manufactured retail price. We decided that we can entertain selling this brush at a lower cost with the way that we have things made and make some serious improvements over the brush. So, Mojo 3, that's what it is. I have another beer sitting here waiting for me. I think I might have to indulge. It's just the beer, right? <laughs>